This video will get you up and running with LinStore Gateway as quickly as possible. What is LinStore Gateway? Well, it essentially extends LinStore, allowing you to easily manage highly available iSCSI targets, NFS exports, as well as NVMe over Fabrics targets. In this walkthrough, we're assuming you already have a LinStore cluster configured. If you do not, you can head over to our website and check out our user's guides and documentation on how to do so and come back to this video at a later time. So for an overview of the components, we have LinStore cluster, which is managing all the block storage, and the data replication between the nodes. And then we have DRBD Reactor, which is handling where these resources that we're going to create, such as NFS exports, et cetera, where those can run and also where they're going to fail over to if, if something fails. Then we have LinStore Gateway, and that kind of ties the LinStore controller together with DRBD Reactor and makes makes kind of all this possible with just a few commands. So taking a look at the three nodes that we have on the command line, on the bottom left, we can see on LinStore 1, we've run an LSBLK, showing us we have a dev VDB. Um, that's a backing disk for storage, and every node's going to have that. We've also created a volume group called storage, which you can see in the bottom right on LinStore-2. Again, that's on every node. The backing storage is all the same. And then in our LinStore cluster on the top, we've run a command called storage pool list, which is showing that we have a store, LinStore storage pool called gateway storage. And that's, that's using the volume group called storage. That'll be sliced up into different logical volumes, replicated block devices, et cetera. So this is our existing LinStore cluster. This is what we're coming into. If you have a LinStore cluster already in use in production, you're going to have multiple storage pools, different configurations like that. So at this point, we'll go ahead and we'll start to set up the components to make LinStore Gateway possible. So let's go ahead and install some prerequisite packages. We need a few things to actually work with NFS exports and, and iSCSI and things like that. Let's go ahead and get started here. Um, let's clear my screen. And we need to install these packages on all nodes. So our prerequisites are installed. So now we can go ahead and we can install DRBD Reactor on all nodes. So now that LinStore Gateway has been installed, we need to make a slight modification to the LinStore satellites, which is every node in this cluster. So to do that, we're going to actually create a file that's in Etsy slash LinStore slash LinStore underscore satellite dot toml. So that, since this file's already been created on all these nodes, I'm just going to show you that it exists. And so this is also listed in our user's guide. So once this file is on every node in the cluster, we need to restart the LinStore satellite service on every node. So there's a couple more files we need to make sure are in the right location. And this is so we can ensure DRBD Reactor will reload itself when its configuration changes. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this command. It's a bit of a long one. And again, we need to do this on all nodes. So we're copying this file from user share, doc, DRBD Reactor, and then there's a, there's a couple system D units in there that we need to make sure are on the right path. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like it was already there on one of my systems. And now that that's copied, we can go ahead and enable the unit. So 
Lastly, we'll go ahead and enable and start the DRD reactor service on all nodes. And let's go ahead and just clear the screen. So now we can finally install the Linstore gateway component in the cluster. Now keep in mind this only has to be done on the controller node, which in this case is Linstore dash zero. Let's go ahead and install that now. Now once it's installed, we just need to Start it and enable it. So now everything's been installed. We need to make sure Linstore Gateway can find everything it needs to be able to host NFS and iSCSI and all these things. So there's a built in command for that. We run Linstore dash gateway, check dash health. And we're passing with flying colors. Now we can actually go and set up some resources. So at this point, we're just gonna focus on the Linstore controller node. We don't need to run commands on all three nodes anymore. And to round out this video, we're gonna go ahead and create an iSCSI target that's highly available on our Linstore cluster with all the components we just installed. But we're gonna do it with just a couple lines in the command line. So to start, We'll run our Linstore dash gateway iSCSI list and nothing's there. We haven't defined anything yet. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this next command. It's a little bit of a long one. And so we're just running Linstore gateway iSCSI create and then we get the IQN target and the virtual IP that we want to use for the iSCSI target and how big of a LUN do we want to create that's going to be a replicated volume to the other nodes in the cluster. So let's go ahead and run this command. It does take a few seconds to set everything up. It's kind of doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes right now. As we can see, our right, SCSI target was created. So let's go ahead and run that iSCSI list command one more time. And there we go. We've got our target on our new service IP started in a good state. Now we can come back to our Linstore cluster itself and run some just basic Linstore commands. Like Linstore resource list. That will show us all the resources in our cluster. Now, if we run this a couple more times, probably see it go primary. There it is. So we've successfully bolted up Linstore Gateway to our existing Linstore cluster. Once we've got a few different components installed, like DRBD Reactor and some config files and things like that, we are able to just super easily create an iSCSI target with a 10 gig LUN and export that as a highly available service to the now now you can take that you can attach it to your vm infrastructure whatever whatever you're doing with it and again it's just as easy to create nfs exports and vme over fabric targets all in a very similar manner so yeah if you like what you see here uh don't hesitate to reach out to us come see us on the community slack that we have our website's full of all kinds of good stuff documentation, user's guides, tech guides. Um, yeah, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.